All right, three, two, one. Okay, and welcome back to the Educators Podcast. I'm your host, Alejandro Gutierrez, um, coming in live from Sacramento, California. And I have a special guest. It took me a couple months to, you know, finally get her to log on with me, but I appreciate her time. Um, Can you uh, introduce yourself to the people? Yeah, so my name is Casey Cassidy. Um, I am here in Fresno, California. Um, I actually just released a book, so I think that's what we're going to be talking about today for the yeah. most part, yeah. and I'm happy to be here, so thank yeah. you. <laughs> well, I appreciate you joining my, uh, joining me and giving me this time today, and um, yeah, so we'll start with that. You know, first of all, um, where are you from, born and raised? Yeah, Fresno, Fresno, okay. California. Yeah, I moved away uh, for about four years to Sacramento, so I have, you know, I still have a huge community over there, but um, a year, about a year and a half ago, I moved back to my hometown. Um, that's a whole other story, but um, yeah, so I'm, I'm here in Fresno again. <laughs> okay. okay, you see a little bit about, I mean, you obviously have your roots in Fresno and you, you're able to, you know, live in Sacramento at a different time of your life. Uh, how do you compare the two? Are, are they similar, a lot different? What do you think? Um, I think they're similar and different, just in, in different ways. Like they have a lot of similarities um, and they're also just different. I don't, yeah, um, I think Sacramento was a little, little more like um it really has a lot of character um fresno is more like there's still stuff to do here i guess mainly kind of just like restaurants and bars and stuff like that but um but yeah i just yeah i think sacramento is kind of more cutesy a little more character there um and yeah i guess maybe more to do in some aspects a little more 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 traffic for sure Um, yeah (laughs) so (laughs) <laughs> where did you, uh, you know, you did most of your schooling in Fresno? Is that where you did all your schooling? And did you go to Fresno um, State? Yeah, so I, have, I have my undergrad from Fresno State. So okay. I did do, I got my bachelor's in communication actually here. Um, I graduated there in like 2012. Um, and I'm actually currently in a master's program, but I'm doing it um, all online. So, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, cool. Yeah, it's actually in Christian ministry. Oh, okay. Okay. That's cool. Um. So, you know, going into your book, I know, you, you know, you say you just released your book, um, you know, I've been following you on social media for some time about that. I'm um, kind of, you know, before that, were you writing other things before you got into like actually being a published author or were you writing like short things? What were you doing with that? Yeah. So my main projects, I guess, um, I would write poetry for fun. Um, but my book actually has a lot of like it has my poetry in it, um, among other things. But I would write poetry and kind of um, do like some performances here and there or like maybe open mic night, stuff like that. Um, And then I would also do more like copyright stuff. Um, I have a few friends who have businesses. Um, So for example, like one of my best friends, she has a clothing line. So I write like a lot of her descriptions for her and like her, like a lot of her like website content and stuff like that. Um, So I do like doing stuff like that, like working more like um, business wise with other people who have businesses. and yeah, those are like the main things. I mean, I, I always try to find maybe like some types of like writing projects here and there, but those are like the main things that I've done. So. When did you, I mean, I'm a teacher, so, you know, speaking of writing and creative writing and all that. So what did you, you know, when did you figure out that that's something you love to do? I mean, obviously you didn't, you would obviously really well, you did, you did it really well in, in school because obviously you're doing it now. Um, but when did you like fall in love with writing? Yeah, I mean, I feel like I've always loved writing, but I also never really saw it as like something that could I could make a career out of. Um, probably until a few years ago when I started writing my book, and I just really, you know, enjoyed the process. It was a long process. It was a learning process, but I also enjoyed it so much. And that's kind of when I was like, oh, I can maybe do this as a career one day, you know, but um, but I've always like written up, I mean, not, I've always like grown up like writing poetry, writing um, even like music and, and songs um, and just anything pretty much. So it's always been a passion of mine. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. So, I mean, you probably, I mean, are you somebody that grew up writing a journal? Do you remember doing that? Or was it like little poems? Was it like school projects? What was it that you really kind of, you could think back and remember like the little writings that you've done. Do you, can you think of those? Um. <laughs> Yeah, so I've done like some poetry slams and stuff like that, like in high school. Um, so I can remember doing that, even though like I do get nervous in front of crowds. So that part I'm not a fan of, but like I like I don't know why I just I still like doing it. <laughs> um, and I can remember actually like this is gonna be so like funny, but I, I can remember being younger and like having like rap battles 
like with like everybody at school, like even the guys, and I would like always win. <laughs> so I would do, I would do like silly stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, you're good at rhyming then for sure. Um, <laughs> yeah. So you obviously are you obviously into reading? Is that something you like to do as well on your free time? Um, to be honest, I don't read. A, I don't read a lot. Okay. Um, what do I? I mean, like if like if there's a book that maybe I'm interested in that like I have read a few books that really changed my life to be honest but I don't like just like go look for books and then like make time to read them okay. but I have read a few books like the book boundaries um is so good and life-changing um the book by Tori Roberts called uh, wholeness changed my life so but I really bought that book because he was a guest speaker at my church and so that's how I heard of it so I just bought it because it was he was there um, and that changed my life. So yeah, like, like there are books that I read and and I loved, but I don't necessarily like read all the time. You know, I go, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah you know, I talk to people and they're like, oh, you know, they, they read this. And I'm like, I don't know. I, I haven't been able to find the time or even set the time to like go, you know, yeah. I, yeah, I'm like that. Too. You know, I'm like that. I, think, I know this probably sounds bad. Like, oh, you're a teacher. But like, I don't know. I, I, I guess I read so much for other things that like, I don't know, like going, sitting down, grabbing a book and reading it. It's, it's kind of hard for me sometimes unless, but what I've heard from English teachers, like you haven't found the right book then, you know, if, you, if you're not into it, you haven't found the right, but like you said, you found some books that have changed your life, have, you know, made a mark on you. So obviously those books are important to you, but you know, sometimes the books will just stumble across, you know, you just find it and, or somebody will recommend it to you. So yeah. that's cool. Yeah. I even actually remember like when I started to write my book and I was thinking about like how long each chapter ne needed to be. One of my good friends asked me like, he's like, do you like to read a lot? And I'm like, well, it's okay. Like she was like, see, like your book doesn't have to be super long. Like a lot of people kind of want you just to like get to the point and like say what you got to say and then go to the next chapter, you know? So right. my book is actually not even that long. It's only like about 130 pages. So um, only, only 130. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> so let's go, let's go right into the book then. Um, how? You know why 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 write a book and and then we'll go and then, you know from there we'll go into how so so why why write a book <laughs> yeah so i mean i've kind of always like talked about it probably for like the last i don't know even in, like five years and um and thought about it and at one point i thought it was going to be like a completely different type of book um and then someone kind of just told me like hey like if there's something that you really feel like you need to do in life then why don't you just make time and actually do it um and so I was like, that's a great idea, you know, and I really just feel also like, so I'm in my thirties now, but I really feel like, um, I mean, even though I feel like anybody can really gain from my book, I also feel like I, I would have loved to have this type of book, like even in my twenties, you know what I mean? Like, like just like these little nuggets of things that I've learned that I wish I would have known when I was like so much younger that I was never really taught as a child or a teenager. Mm -hmm. Um, so I really just want my experiences um, and just the wisdom that I've gained from those experiences to be able to, to really just help other people who are maybe in a season of life that I was in okay. um, when I was younger. So, yeah. I think that's good. It's, it's becoming that resource for the next, you know, group of people behind you, you know, because I think, like you said, you wish it was there for you, right? So like you found that need, like, okay, there's a need for this book. Um, and how can I be that need? How can I be that resource for the next people that, that need this? So, you know, kind of talk about the book then what, you know, what's the book called and, and if you want to tell us a little bit about what's in it, you know, whatever you want to tell us about. Yeah, so I actually have it. I'll just show you sure. um, as well. There it is. So it's called Change. Let's see, it's like chain because that's like a kind of like a biblical concept, kind of just like being in chains and like just seeking freedom. Okay. Um, okay. So it's Change and then you can't really see the subtitle, but it says Finding Freedom in Christ Through Poetry Principles and Prayer. Okay. Um. And so, yeah, it's really just to help people find hope, healing, and wholeness. Like, those are the three words that I really feel like is what I want to provide to my readers um, as they discover their identity in Christ. Okay. Um, and so, each chapter is a role that God has in our lives. Um, like, God is a father, God is a son, God is a spirit, God is a creator, God is a savior, God is a king, God is a healer, and God is a lover. So they're each themed toward that, and then they each have a poem, a principle, which is like a teaching, um, a prayer over the reader, and then what we call a practice, well, what I call the practice, but it's kind of just like a self-reflection. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's cool. So, how, you know, how, how did um, how did that come about? Like, I mean, when, you know, obviously somebody talked to you, you talked to people about it, but when did you start, you know, putting pen on paper and like start writing? How long did this take? 
<laughs> yeah, so um, after that day where I was like, okay, I'm gonna actually write my book, I probably didn't write it for about six months. I was like doing some like mental preparation and thing or whatever, and I thought it, my book was actually gonna be a devotional. And at that time I was even involved in ministry and I was in this woman's ministry. Um, and so I started like literally like every week I would like write um, devotionals and I would bring them with me. And like, you know, just, I, I mean, I wanted them to also be used like to help these people, but it also, um, it, it kind of motivated me to like start like writing and collecting all of these devotionals. So I did that for several months. Um, and then, yeah, just one day I finally sat down and started writing it. And I think I got through the intro. And then when I was going to actually like start writing, which I changed probably like five times since then. But, and then when I finally started writing like the first chapter, um, I just felt like the Holy Spirit really just like downloaded like the entire layout of the books. And it was so completely different from what I expected. Um, and I even had a friend tell me like, like previously, like, hey, Casey, I actually think that your book is going to have your poetry in it. And I was like, kind of like, like I was nice about it, but I was kind of like against that because I was so um, like, or I was so like thinking that it was gonna be something else. But then yeah, when I started writing it, um, I was, that's, it was, I just knew like, okay, it's gonna have my, my poetry in it, so. <laughs> cool. No, it's your, it's your, it's yeah. your what, how did you balance that? Like, you know, writing and obviously you have a life, you know, you're, you're working, you're doing whatever you're doing, you have your social life, you have your family. Like, how did you, how did you find that balance to write? Because I feel like, that's probably one of the issues people might have into pursuing a goal they might have. Like, for example, you know, I don't know, I've, I've been thinking of doing these different documentaries or different things. And it's like, I don't even, right now my time is so full. Like I wouldn't even know where to find time for that. So how did you do that? How did you find time to balance all those things that you have in your life? Yeah, yeah. Um, so a few ways, I mean, one, I guess, well, I don't have, I don't have kids and I'm not married. So that probably helps. Okay, yeah, yeah, <laughs> That opened um, up a couple of hours right there daily. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and another way is I just had to really be intentional, you know, like um, it's so easy to try to find like a perfect time to do everything. I mean, to like pick up new assignments, um, but there never will be a perfect time. So I really just had to, you know, maybe stay up later and get up earlier. Um, but I was, you know, working full time and in leadership for ministry and just different stuff. I, so I did have a lot going on, but um and then I also had to, another, another thing I did was I had to um, also sacrifice some things, you know, so um, I had to, um, like, actually around that time, I, I stepped down from leadership from a couple of specific ministries just so I could have more time. Mm -hmm. um, and then the last thing that I did was I, I kind of like, um, I was able, I had, you know, I, I had people in my life at that time as well, and I still do, but I had people in my life at that time who were also kind of like on their grind and trying to do certain things. So when I would hang with them, a lot, a lot of times we would just do this. Like I would be writing, they would be working on whatever they're working on or and maybe their music or whatever it is. Um, and so we would be able to still spend time together, like kind of in a social environment, but we would also be working towards our goals. So. That's good yeah. to have that support system, like you said, and seeing people around you that are, like you said, they're 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 goal driven, right? They're doing their thing, and maybe you could just set that time and and get around with each other. Like, okay, we're all working, we're quiet, but we might have to bounce ideas or whatever. That that's good to have, especially kind of reminds you like those college study groups, you know, like, hey, let's meet up and study, and <laughs> no one's really talking, but it's like ten of you there working on stuff, and it's like kind of cool to like, okay, he's working, I'm working, you know, she's working, so yeah, you know, definitely, yeah. So obviously, a habit you probably picked up when you were, you know, in school and meeting up with people and getting work done and. You know, so I'm glad to, you know, hear that you're able to publish your, you know, publish your book and get it out there. And so what was that process like as far as like on the financial, you know, I guess business side of it, how were you able to even set that up? Because I think people, uh, including myself, we might have ideas of how we want to, what we want to do. Uh, we just might not have the resource, you know, because you can Google how to write a book, but, you know, nothing like hearing it from someone who's actually done it. So can you kind of tell us that first step you took, obviously after writing it, how did you get that on paper? How did you get that final? <laughs> Yeah, so um, I, I don't know, I feel like maybe I got a little lucky in a way because, um, so I ended up going through a self-publishing process um, or company, I should say, called the Sophos Group. And um, so I just remember, like, it was like two Decembers ago, I guess. And um, as soon as I was, I just remember, like, finishing my book and, like, looking at it and, like, okay, I'm ready, I'm ready. And then... Um, I, I had like a friend 
like tell me, I think I posted something or something. I don't really remember, but anyway, just long story short, I had a friend like tell me like, Hey, I know this pastor who has a self-publishing company. I'm going to like connect you guys. So pretty much like she connected me to him, like me and him had like a more, more of like a formal meeting kind of, um, to kind of just like get to know each other and see if like it was a good, a good fit for each other. Um, and then I started working with him and he was like more, he was more of like my mentor. He's also a published author. So, um, he's experienced it and he was kind of more of like my, my mentor who I would meet with maybe like once or twice a month. Um, but he also helped me get started on everything. And then he actually connected me to everybody who I needed. So he connected, which actually I was not obligated to go through, but everybody who he connected me with, like, I really enjoyed working with them. So, um, he got, he connected me to my, my marketer, my cover designer, who was also the internal designer, um, my editor who has done so much for me, um, pretty much every, everything I needed, like he had somebody for me. Um, so I was never like left, like needing to scramble around to look for somebody. Um, and I kind of just worked with them as like independent contractors kind of. So, um, I would just like, be you know, I would, um, just pay them their fees. Um, and that's, that's what I did. So, um, but I, I will say that going through that process, um, it was a civil, it took about a year because, um, or a little over a year because I was still having to do a lot on my own, mm. you know? So I was still, which is kind of cool in a way because I made like all of the final decisions pretty much. Right. Um, but I was still having to like, um, change all of the neat, like the edits that my editor, you know, told me that I should change. I still had to like, um, what else? Like just, yeah, everything that, like everything would keep coming back to me for like my, my voice, my opinions, my thoughts, yeah. my, my vision and, and all my decisions. So it still took, it took a long time because it's not like I just gave it to somebody and said, here, like do what you want, want to do with it, you know? Um, but I, I, I like that I went that way. Um, and it was a lot less. I think I probably, I mean, yeah, it probably was about maybe between five to six thousand dollars on everything um, that I did for it. I mean, I don't really know a number, but that's just what I'm guessing. Okay. Um, compared to like traditionally, like through like someone who does everything for you, it could be like probably at least 10 grand. Right. So I do feel like I saved quite a bit going that route as well. Um, but you know, and I feel like I was able to do that also because I did move back home and because uh, Fresno is actually like way more affordable to live in. <laughs> and when I moved here, I got like a way higher paying job, like praise God. Oh, okay. So that was kind of like the main reason why I was able to put money into this, to be honest. Like if, if I was still in Sacramento, I probably wouldn't have been able to. Oh, wow. Okay. I would have been, I would have been, I mean, I, God always makes a way, but I would have been struggling and I probably would have been like stressed the heck out, like the whole time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no. So the, yeah. So hey, you made that, you made those moves, you made those changes. And I think, um, on the business, you know, side of it, I mean, it worked out, right? It worked out for you to be able to, like you said, go back home and um, you got the money, you got the more money now, you make, you make a little more, you got a cool little job you're doing, you're working with. And so you're able to, you know, have that little bit of freedom to be able to purchase the things you need to, right? Obviously there's a process to this, right? You know, like some people sell their book or they might have an idea for a book and then they want a publisher to give them some money up front, whatever that, I don't know how, I don't even know how it works. I'm just guessing. Yeah, but yeah. this way, like you said, self-published, you're pretty much, like you said, you're getting all this work done yourself, you're financing it, you're putting your final input. So then the book, you know, are they being, are they printed before people order them? Is it like a set number of books already printed or are they making them as they're ordered? Yeah, good question. Um, how does, I'm pretty sure they just make them as they order okay. um, because it is through like Amazon and then like the Barnes and Noble website. Um, so I guess I'm not too, I should know, but I'm actually going through like a middle company. So I'm not really okay. sure like how Amazon works specifically when people order from them. Okay. Um, but I can also order books from my middle company, um, uh, for, you know, like obviously like less of a cost than what I'm selling it for. Um, so I do have like books, um, on me that I can also sell, okay. um, that are pre-printed obviously because I have them, <laughs> but yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And when you, when you like, uh, I mean, I'm trying to envision this, are you writing down these, when you're writing the stuff you're going to put in your book, are you writing this on paper? Are you jotting it down? Or you like have this running big word document? How does that, how do you organize in all these thoughts to put into a book? That's a good question. Um, so the poems like were easy because half of them I already had and they were just relevant to the theme of the chapter. 
And then the other half I, I wrote for the book specifically, but I already kind of knew like what I wanted to write about. Um, and then the, the teaching part, um, yeah, I mean, I guess um, a lot of times I would just honestly just kind of sit there and just start writing and just kind of see like what, like how it flowed. But other times, like I would kind of take like maybe things that I've, I've thought about in the past, even if it's just like, for example, like maybe a quote that I wrote like a year before or whatever. And I would be like, oh, I want to use that because that's a pretty dope quote, you know, and so I would like put it in there somewhere and then I would kind of like expand on that, you know, so um, I mean, yeah, I think, and then maybe if I, like, a lot of times if I drive, I also have, like, random thoughts, too, so I'll, like, record something in my phone, too, and oh. then I'll, like, go back to it later, so I think I did that a lot, too. There you go. Um, yeah, so, I mean. Just I guess, a little bit, yeah, a little mix of things. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I guess that's, like, I don't know, that's just my thing. It's, like, I want to start these projects, but I'm, like, it has to be perfect, and I'm, like, okay, I need a new book. I need a new book, notebook, right? That one's too old. I don't know. I just make excuses to not get started. I think it's just a way of maybe just shooing my, myself away from doing it, but you know, I'm glad that you were able to like get all these things together and, and figure it out and getting connected with the right people to get it on this, you know, uh, actually print it on paper and having people, you know, being able to. Uh, yeah. And I even had, I had a group of people actually who like read, I, I asked them to like read my, my very first draft. Okay. Like, <laughs> I mean, there's still a lot of content that I still have in my book now, but like, it probably wasn't the best, best, you know, and it, it wasn't perfect for sure. But they actually read it and they gave me like tons of like great feedback. You know what okay. I mean? So I actually did that entire process that took a few months because I didn't want to rush them. Like even before I, I connected with my editor. So how, okay. I'm glad you took me. I was going to ask you that right now. How well do you take, you know, uh, constructive criticism or feedback? I mean, when someone's reading your stuff, how well do you take that? I mean, kind of reflect on, on how that works. <laughs> yeah. So... Um, I think I take it pretty well. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure I use most of the feedback that people gave me, especially if I agreed with them. No, I'm just saying. <laughs> <But> if, <laughs> especially if I mean, I, I guess I asked pretty much everybody who I, I trusted as well. But I think I think that's important. You know, like I feel like if maybe I would have had somebody read it and give me feedback who maybe I didn't really initially like trust their opinion for whatever reason like maybe they didn't have the right intentions or you know like I, so I guess I actually carefully chose those people so I think that's why it was also easier for me to to receive that feedback right. um but I think it definitely depends on the person when we are receiving feedback um, and like your relationship with them you know and like just to like discern like like where they are coming from like what their intentions are um but yeah because I am I was pretty cool with those people and you know most of them um I was like either either worked with or in ministry with or whatnot then um I mean it was it was still up to me like maybe a couple things like I wasn't offended but maybe I didn't like apply those things but for the most part um yeah I mean I feel like I I, I did take the, it well and I think I do in general <laughs> depending on who it is <laughs> right depending on who it, yeah you, yeah because yeah. I remember writing you know, I remember writing in you know school and my mom was a teacher and she let me see your essay, you know, she would want to read it. And, I, and I'm, I was more like, don't read it. Like, I didn't like people telling me even if like one thing was wrong, I, I would like fake it. Like, oh, I was going to change that anyway. You know? <laughs> That's just the way I am still. Like, you know, I, I, I want, I almost want everyone to like me, you know, it's like, hey, you know, I didn't mean it that way or whatever. And I just, I guess I'm kind of breaking out of that now where it's like, you know, I'm in my thirties as well, where I'm like, man, I don't care what that person thinks. If I had the good intentions, it is what it is, you know, but but sometimes you're just like, oh man, a person doesn't like me. What am I going to do? You know, that's just the way I am. I don't know. I'm trying to, I'm trying to fight through that for sure. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I feel like I could maybe be that way in maybe some areas of my life. Like okay. from a book experience specifically, I feel like it, I didn't really have the experience that. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I have, I, I'm, I'm kind of the same way in some ways. <laughs> okay. No, I mean, especially like when I started this podcast, it was like during the pandemic, right? We're just, we're at home, right? And I was just like, I started getting into podcasts. I started hearing a lot of them and, and just like, I don't know, seeing different people. And I, I, I'm just the kind of guy that I've tried a YouTube channel before. I've tried all kinds of things. So I was like, you know what, why not? You know, why not just do a little podcast? I was on my phone just messing around with it. And all of a sudden I'll get like 200 downloads. I'm like, what? Like, I don't even know like 200 people that I can count. So I started feeling kind of cool. Like, wow. And people do little feedbacks and I'm like, oh man, whatever. Even if it's not good, just tell me whatever it may be. I just want to hear, you know, I just want to hear this feedback. Let me know. Um, and now kind of just, Man, I'm already on episode. I mean, you're you're episode 45, so you know oh. this is this is like pretty deep now, right? We're we're already like all the way in, and 
you know, I want to get to, I have a little benchmark that I want to meet and it's a goal that I've made for myself. And definitely the biggest goal that I said was I wanted to do for a whole year, you know, and I feel like a lot of people start a project, but they don't see results right away and they just stop. Mm -hmm. Right. And it it could be for whatever thing. It could be a job. It could be a relationship. It could be, you know, getting in shape, being healthy, whatever it may be. It's like, they they don't see results in two, three weeks. Like, no, see, I'm done. Right. I'm not going to the gym anymore or whatever it may be. And so I was like, how can we, how can we not, you know, how can we not, we got to give each other ourselves. Sorry. We got to give ourselves that time to even see if this is going to work. Right. And so to me, it was like, let me do it for a year and then uh, I'll see where I'm at. So, you know, you know, now that you got your first book out, um, you know, what are you, what are you, what are you feeling right now? How's that working? I mean, how are you, you're out there. I see you on social media. I see you, um, you know, that's where I, I ran into you. Right. Um, I see you like on different people's lives. You're reconnecting with different people. You're connecting with people on their, on their social media platforms. Kind of tell me how, how are you living today with this book out? Yeah, well, um, so I actually just re- just released it yesterday, so it's pretty pretty recent. But you know, I did, as you can see, like or as you've seen, like I have been promoting it for a while. I did like a little like pre order thing going on. Okay. Um, there was a little small like uh, issue that I actually ran into, um, but it's okay. <laughs> so like, there's like ups and downs still, you know, like with the whole process. But I'm still feeling good about it. Like I'm not getting discouraged. Um. And yeah, I have, I mean, it's, it's a very enjoyable and like rewarding experience. Um, I still can't really believe that I'm actually like a published author. It's like crazy. Like, <laughs> like, like people will like tell me that and I'm like, what I am? Oh yeah, I forgot, you know? Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I feel great about it. Um, I'm, I'm really excited. You know, it's still like newly released. So I'm like really excited just to kind of see what happens, you know, and just, um, I'm just like like prayerful and hopeful that this book just get does get into the hands of everyone who who needs it. So yeah, so so I mean, I know people usually do like a, a book tour. Are you doing like this social media? Is that your? Is this? I mean, this is part of your book tour right here, right? You're on the podcast. So what's that looking like for you? For your little book tour? How you you know? How are you promoting this book? Yeah, yeah. So I'm actually do, I am doing a book. I'm doing a blog tour. So I have about 10 um, bloggers. So my editor actually connected me with this, with this um, blogging company called Celebrate Lit. <clears throat> so we're getting lit in the blogging industry right now. <laughs> and um, so I have like 10 bloggers who are doing reviews at the end of the month for my book. So that will actually help me um, get more exposure. <clears throat> and then um and then um, I am planning to do a couple book signings as well, but I'll start promoting promoting soon. So um, I think I'm actually going to do one in Fresno and then one in Sacramento. So I'm kind of just like choosing my weekends and trying to like, um, I'm not like in a super hurry, but I, I think I want to um, at least do one by the end of the month. Um, so I'll, I'm planning to do that. Um, and other than that, yeah. Oh, another thing that I've kind of been using is marketing. Although I guess I, I don't, I haven't really been doing a good job about telling people that it's to market the book, but I've been doing those spoken word videos. So I don't know if you've seen, I have like two out right now and I just actually filmed my third one um, on Friday. So that will come out in probably like a month. Um, but those are, are uh, poems from my book. So that's kind of like why I did those in the first place. Like I just had this idea like a year ago, like, oh, I want to like, um, I want to actually like do videos for the poems in my book so people can get like a visual of like what they're going to read. Yeah. You know, so I've done that too, but um, yeah, I'm just trying to think of like things to do and then I just try to do them. <laughs> well, that's cool. And, and obviously there's no like, you know, there's no like, you know, I guess <laughs> instructions on how to do this, right? No one tells you do this, this, this. And everything, <laughs> everything changes, right? We had the pandemic hit. So obviously, you know, different venues are not open, whatever may be different little, you know, places to go do these things. And so, Obviously you had to adjust, you have the, we're all living through this pandemic, this rough time right now. And so, you know, Hey, you're doing it, you're getting through it. You know, your book is out, people can find it, you know, obviously we'll, we'll let them know where to find it in, at the end of the show. But, you know, um, I was just very impressed that you were able to, you know, publish this book and you say, do it on your own and uh, juggle everything else that you have going on. Cause I feel like, like I said before, getting projects done is really hard when it's maybe not someone's priority or they don't see results in it quickly. And I, like you said, you're doing, you were doing these things you know, for the book, you know, it's not like money was coming in right away. It's not what it's for, right? You're doing this because you wanted the book to come out. And you mm-hmm. you haven't mentioned at all one time that you're trying to be a millionaire off this, right? You know, you, <laughs> like, oh, you, you said, yeah. I want the book because I want it to be for somebody who might need the book, you know, like the way I needed it before. So 
you know, kind of talk about that. I mean, is, is it more of a passion thing than a business right now? Um, or is it like kind of, so, yeah, I, I think it's both because I really feel like, um, if we, if we feel like we're leaving, like living in our calling, which we should be passionate about, then I feel like we can make that a business. Um, but our heart needs to be in the right place. You know what I mean? So I feel like, you know, if somebody is more money driven, um, then that's, I mean, that's kind of on them. And, you know, like, I can't say, say like what would happen or what wouldn't happen with, <laughs> with that. But, um, but for me, I feel like um, God will honor the fact that I'm looking at my calling and my assignment as a responsibility, you know, in that sense, and that my heart is in the right place, because I do want him to use me for others, you know, I do want my, my gift of like writing and, and encouragement um, to really just reach other people and literally change their lives. Um, yeah. So, um, I mean, I guess, and then in the future, I do want to do, so actually I do have a plan um, to eventually, I don't know if you've seen like my little logos and stuff or like my, my book page, but it's called Finding Freedom in Christ. And that's kind of like my ministry, but it's not like officially set up to be like a nonprofit yet, but I eventually want to do that. Okay. And then I want like more books, like I want all my books under that because I do plan to write more. I want like Bible studies under that. I want my spoken word videos and just whatever else I can think of. Mm. Um, I really want it to be community driven as well, though. Um, but anyway, yeah, so um, so I do have, I guess, more like business plans in the future, but I'm just not really like there yet. <laughs> you know, day by day, I mean, you're doing it one thing at a time. So, and I like that you have all these different ideas. You're already going to start branching out and doing that. And I was going to ask you that about that because, you know, I think your video is a great idea, especially for what you're doing with your book, because it's a good way to, uh, you know, like you said, get people to like come across it and like, oh, what? She has a book, you know, and so they can, you know, kind of bounce back. And it's the power of social media, right? Like, it, it, if it's used for the good or if you use it the right way, you know, it, it could really benefit you if, if you're, you know, as an author or whatever it may be. Uh, especially as an author, right? Because I think a lot of times people want to read a book, maybe they don't know the author, but now with social media, like you see who the author is, right? You can see who's writing this. You can see <laughs> the daily life. You're like, oh, okay. And might, they might even reconnect with you even more, or they might even like, sorry, uh, see themselves in you even more because they see what you do, uh, you know, day in and day out. So that's pretty cool how you use that. Um, so kind of like with the book, right? I'm just thinking right now, it's coming to my head, you know, because obviously when I, when I think of podcasts, I think it's just a new blog. You know, like, you know, remember people were writing blogs, and they were just writing, you know, they're doing these blogs, and people read them. And I just feel like now it's just audio, right? It's so audio driven and video, you know, people just, they don't have the attention span, right? Or they don't have the time to sit down and read. So, you know, they, they listen to things, right? And when I go running, I'm listening to a podcast. And if it's not, if it's not catching my attention, I have other podcast episodes that I go to, you know, other shows that I go to quickly. Um, so do you have any plans of going into the audio space for your book? <laughs> Um, that's a great question. I don't really have plans yet because I just feel like I'm learning so much already. And I just feel like I know if I think about that too much, I might get a little overwhelmed. Um, I just don't want, I mean, I don't know, like, I, um, I don't really feel like sitting down for like, you know, a few hours and like reading my entire book until like a microphone to be honest. I'm just, <laughs> but, I'm just saying, I mean, if it's done correctly, you got people like that are in music, right? That you, you might know and you connect it, you get this, you know, I think I think you would you'd be surprised of you know the turnout for sure if you had the audio. Yeah, working. I mean I, I probably will one day. I just feel like I just like if I'm thinking about that now, I just feel like stressed out. Right. But you know, it's actually funny because I had someone tell me that um that that they are that way. Like they're like, yeah, I'm such like like of a like audio person. Um so I don't know if this I don't even know if it worked to be honest, but she actually asked me to send her the PDF of my book. Well, I offered first, but um, and then um, she was like, oh, that would be great because um, I could probably open the PDF on my phone and I, I can maybe have it like read it to me. Oh, okay. So, um, I mean, it might be like super monotone, like it's probably like Siri or something but, or like some computer, I don't know. But, but, um, but yeah, so I mean, it's something that I should probably eventually do, but I just haven't really put much thought into it yet. So. No, I'm just, I'm just saying, I don't know. I think. You know, one thing at a time, it's definitely something you should explore because I think uh, just like you do in the videos, I think audio, you know, you can get someone who drives for a living or, you know, they, they don't have time to read a book, you know, or whatever it may be. Or like I said, when I, the book, only book that I've actually, I could say I read, but I didn't really read it. I just listened to it. Um, it was like 10 chapters and it was an hour long each chapter. This guy was like, you know, reading it and it was a different voice. Uh, and then in between the chapters, 
like he would talk to the actual person. It was, you know, the, you know, their story, their life story. It was like a biography. So they actually talked to them. It was kind of like a radio show slash podcast slash, you know, audio book. And it just kept me interested. And it's like, if I think about, if I would have, I would have never found the time to read 10 chapters. That's just me. You know, that's just the way. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It's just me. So just think about it. I don't know. I think <laughs> it could be something that works for you. Uh, down the road, like you said, right now, let's get the book out to people. And, yeah, and I wonder if I wonder if Nook or Kindle has an option because I, I I also sell those for my book. I wonder if like they, but I don't have Nook or Kindle, so I have no clue. But I'm sure, sure like I mean, it's it's 2021, right? Like I'm sure no. you could put a, a little voice on there, right? I imagine, I imagine you could have like yourself reading the poems and then someone else reading like the rest of the book. You know, so you have two voices and then like. <laughs> I don't know. I'm already kind of producing this. Yeah, work. I could do that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't see why you couldn't sell it, you know, even like a little reduced rate or whatever, maybe even the same, even the same price. It doesn't matter. Um, and then just have people, you know, being able to hear it and then, you know, they're driving or, or they're doing exercise or they're cleaning, whatever. They don't matter how to, you know, it's a working mom. She doesn't have time to like sit and read a book. I don't know. Think about it. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, yeah, I love it. I'm, I'm being, <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to, I don't know, spread. I don't know some kind of ideas i guess for you yeah um, i love it thank you i appreciate it yeah yeah so you you know you got the book going on um and, and people are getting it people are ordering it um i mean do you are you the kind of person that's like selling this to like your family and friends or are you kind of just like you know kind of step back and people know about it obviously in your family and friends but how does that work Are you want to be the person that's selling it you know door to door or are you kind of just going to let kind of it take a course um Good question. Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of like, like, obviously, I'm letting my my friends and family know, and then people on social media. Um, but yeah, I think I'm gonna kind of let it take its course, um, and just kind of, you know, see what happens. Um, I haven't really, I, I mean, I don't really know. I, <laughs> I'm still thinking, kind of like thinking about that too. Like, what different strategy are gonna be like aside from like social media, right. you know? So, um. But I have already like a lot of support, um, like like from my family and friends, you know, um, and even people on like, on the social media who actually like maybe I don't talk to them that much, but maybe I went to high school with them mm -hmm. or just whatever it is, you know. Like I have people on there that like I had this one girl who went to high school with, and she she bought like four books, like one for herself and like and three for other people that she knows, you know. And we don't even talk that much, you know, but um. So like, I feel so blessed, you know, just like with already seeing like the people responding. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know like how um, intense I'm going to try to be as far as like sales. I'm not, I'm not really sure like how, I guess like the word would be like proactive. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure like what, what it's going to look like right. yet. So. No, that's cool. I mean, <laughs> you, have, like, you have like goals in mind, like maybe I want, you know, this many sales this month do you have something like written down somewhere or in your head or, or are you just kind of like let's see how may goes or what is it what does it look like um probably like 12 million <laughs> how does that sound 12 million sounds great 12 million sounds if you get to 12 million then this podcast will be you know at 10 million <laughs> I'm cool with that. yeah i do um yeah i know that sounds a little like unrealistic <laughs> no. but i do, you I do. Number. that's cool <laughs> I know I'm just gonna speak into existence, but um, I do I do desire to to have this book in other countries though, like for mm -hmm. sure. Like even if it's not like global global, like I, I like I, I would love to like see other the people in other countries like like have and like respond to this book. Um, so that would be pretty cool uh, for sure, like nationally. Um, but yeah, I don't really um have I, like a number per se um i mean i do you know i, I think about it all the time like of course i want it to sell <laughs> but i don't really know what to expect so <laughs> I, I, is this something you want to like eventually become your full-time gig and like just be an author or what i mean are you i do i do like i love my you know i love my eight to five to be honest like how it's on you like before this like i love my eight to five i'm so grateful um and it would be even a good place to retire from but i just I just also feel like, yeah, like I, I eventually do want to step away from that and get more into being a, an author full time for sure. Tell me how yeah. cool that'd be, right? Just be like, that'd be amazing. <laughs> right. And they say like, if you, if you do something, if you work, if you're doing something you love for work, then you're not, you don't work a day in your life. You know what I mean? That's what they say. So, you know, like you said, if it's your passion it's something you like to do, something you love to do and it, it pays your bills, it helps you, you know, live. Then you're not really working you know you won't see it as a job you, you won't see it as you're clocking in you're, you're just yeah. your passion yeah that's cool and i hope exactly. that point for sure um 
you know, and, and, you know, just, you know, you got the book going and, and like you said, the, the, the book scenes kind of changed, right? Obviously you got Amazon now, which is like this global phenomenon and it's not going anywhere. Um, but up. So, you know, before, obviously like, you know, they, you had to get in, the, in these bookstores and get people to go buy the physical copy. I can only imagine that now it could be a little bit easier, like you said, to get uh, nationally recognized or even globally, just because this is Amazon. You know, people just have to go, they just go to Amazon. Is that where they order your book at? Yeah, Amazon. And then it's also on the Barnes and Noble website. Okay. Um, and then I do plan to have book signings. So whether they already have a book or they want one, I'll have some on me when I do those. Um, but you are right. Like I did, I am looking, well, I was kind of looking, but I haven't like fully executed the, the look yet. Cause I think I have to like email somebody, but I do want my book like in the actual Barnes and Nobles, but I may have to like pick and choose like, like which location. So that's like something that I'll have to like look into. Um, and then I also wanted, um, my books to be in like hospitals, like hospital cafes. Cause mm. they always have that little spiritual section there. And so I think that would be awesome. Um, so I tried to actually contact like the distributor who does a lot of the ones, at least in this area. Um, but I don't think they're accepting any submissions right now. So I, I might have to wait, I guess, but yeah, anyway, I have all these different ideas of like where I want my book, but for now it's Amazon and Barnes and Noble. So. <laughs> order it and get it there yeah so i mean that's the, and i'm going to share the link you know don't worry i'm going to share your, your book link and uh, where they can find it in the episode notes so people can just click it if they're interested to go you know check it out and support you and you know i hope they do you know because hey you're doing something you like to do you're doing something you love to do and and um like you say you're being that resource you're being that something you're being you're feeling the need for somebody else and um i think that's 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 the best part of this whole book you never like you said you weren't even mentioning money before and now now you want to sell 12 million copies. So we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Yeah. <laughs> Not for me though, of course. <laughs> 12 million copies. Yeah. No, that'd be good. That'd be great to like get to that point, you know, and um, yeah, you know. So I don't know. Um any any anything you do um as far as, you know, let's say for fun, you know, because I know you're writing, I know you're doing uh, you know, you live, you have your job, you know, what do you do for fun that's not that's not, you know, work related? <laughs> Um, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty fun person, but I don't know. I just feel like I haven't done too much lately. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm also in school, so that takes, that takes a lot of time, but, um, I'm just really very family oriented. Um, so I'm always over my family. Um, I love just going out, out to dinner or just hanging with friends, just doing whatever. Um, I do, I like traveling. Um, I kind of experienced more of like traveling a couple years ago. And then when I wanted to travel again, COVID hit. So that didn't really, you know, it's kind of been, <laughs> um, but I do love traveling. Um, yeah, I don't know. I love food. Um, I love music. So, but I'm pretty, I'm pretty chill. Like all like, I've done like stuff, like I've gone skydiving a couple of times, stuff like that. So, you know, I, but like, I'm down for like adventures, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but, um, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm a pretty simple person. I guess I love the beach and stuff like that so I just kind of like I'll like drive to like the the central coast um a lot um like down like by Pismo and stuff um yeah so that's kind of all I really do like, yeah, no, obviously this year has been tough with the pandemic we all been locked down for a while and like I said good thing came out of this for you know like it, it was a tough time but I do feel like you know if you're able to get through this time you're able to take care of some stuff like reconnect with family whatever spends more time at home so I'm hoping the people that are listening to this were able to do that. You know, the pandemic was tough for a lot of us, but we did get, through, I think we're almost there. I think it's, I think it's almost over. I don't know if we can say yeah, it. It was actually, it was, it was a blessing for me because it, it did give me, I mean, we all, we all probably had hardships like during it, but it was also a blessing for me because it really also gave me time to focus on this book and to get it out when I did, you know, so, um, that was kind of nice. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we were, you were able to, you know, put the last minute touches on this and, you know, be grounded at home and, and, you know, now that we're kind of opening back up, you know, I hope that you're able to get out there and do your book tour, you know, and do the physical book signings and get, you know, get in front of these people and let people, you know, meet you as an author and, and you could, you know, uh, you know, sign their book and give them, you know, whatever they want from you. I mean, I think, I think that's the coolest thing now that we're going to go back into this real world now. It's almost kind of weird, right? Because we've been stuck at home and not being able to go anywhere. So it's kind of weird. I went to a restaurant the other day and it was like, wow, we get to eat inside and, you know, I like, take your mask off. This is crazy. So, it's kind of cool that we're able to get back to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah. So anyway, any, any tips you have for anybody who's, you know, trying to get into writing a book or, or starting a project like that? Um, Don't tell them everything. Just give them something. 
Yeah, let's see. So one would be um, just to just to be intentional, you know, like there's never going to be a perfect time to start writing a book or making an album or whatever your gift is. Um, another one is, yeah, just to always believe in yourself. You know, we're all, all obviously going to have people who might doubt this. Um, you know, like I've had people like all the time, like tell me like, oh, like, like you might want to keep like, um, they would tell me, like when I, when I would mention like maybe being an author full time, you know, like even though they had good intentions, like they would always tell me like, oh, like like you probably won't make that much money being author full time, like that's not very high paying. Like why don't you still keep your, you know, like whatever else you got going on, you know, and and so um for me, I'm I'm thinking in my mind like no, like I'm gonna be successful at it like in the future, you know, like 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 I repeat that, <laughs> you know, so like just always believe in yourself. Um, even if people who might even be whatever they are, like more educated or older or whatever they are, like even if they try to tell you like that maybe you should go a different route. Um, if you really feel like it's your calling and it's your purpose to do that thing, then I say just do whatever you need to do to do it. Um, and yeah, and then always try to um, make sure that you have like sub, like a supportive community around me whether it's one person or a hundred people um you know we can't always do things on our own you know like we like we will have times where where we are going to doubt ourselves uh where we are going to um maybe want to give up or whatever it is or feel defeated um or feel like we're not good enough you know so we, so it's good to always have those people to be able to kind of um put us back in the right place Hey, that's it. That, that support system is huge, you know, and having the, <laughs> I like how you hit that because you, you were talking about how, you know, people make those comments to you or like they might, it might be coming from a good place, but we never realize, you know, what kind of comments that we make could affect somebody. You know, it could just be like, oh, you really want to do that? And that just shies you away. And I, I told a story before and, you know, I wanted to be an architect when I was growing up. And I remember my math teacher was like, oh, you won't make that much money. And that stuck with me. And like as a middle schooler, it was like, Oh, that's enough for me, man. My math teacher saying it, I'm done, you know? And so yeah. I can't blame, <laughs> yeah, so blame my math teacher for that, but I could definitely say like, wow, well, that comment stuck with me. I still remember today. So it's like, you know, little comments like that, instead of just saying like, oh, you want to do that? Okay. Then you probably need to be, you know, practicing whatever. And then I'm like, mm -hmm. okay. And I put the work mm -hmm. in. So sometimes a little comment and I'm a teacher. So I know I'm very careful about what I say. I'm very careful about the comments I make because these kids have these passions. You know, they want to be rappers. They want to be actors. They want to be film directors. Inside, I might be like, oh, man, that's going to be tough, right? But I don't say it. And I let them know, okay, you want to do that? These are the steps of getting there. You know, so and I kind of get, I kind of redirect them that way. Like, okay, you want to be, you know, a professional athlete. You know, where do you play now? What do you do? What are your habits like? And little things like that. And some of them were like, oh, man, I don't do any of these things. Like, no. So obviously, professional athlete might not be your thing, you know? So, you, so little things like that were, I don't know, it's just constructive criticism. It's it's uh, some guidance and, and trying to, you know, I don't want to put people down or, or, or you know, mm -hmm. crush a dream. We don't want to be dream crushers for sure. <laughs> exactly. exactly. No. So anyway, let, let, let the people know where can they find your book? I mean, I know we talked about it a little bit, kind of give them the process, how they can get there. I'll, I'll share the link, but if you can kind of tell them what they can search up to find your book. Yeah. Yeah. So um, if you go to Amazon, oh, actually, well, I, I do have the link as well um, in, in my bio, but um, if you go to Amazon, you can just type in either my name, or you could type in change. You don't have to type this part in, okay? Just <laughs> I don't think there's a key for this anyway, but <laughs> just type in change, but like with the I right here, so don't forget the I. Um, it, it will come right up, to be honest. Like either on the Amazon website or the Barnes and Noble, it will come right up. Like you said, it'll be the first thing that you see, and then you can choose either the ebook version or the hard or the hardback version. So and soon the audiobook version. But she's working on that. Yeah, yeah, almost. <laughs> what did you guys know? <laughs> so then, uh, is there like certain amount of time the book will be available, or do they tell you that it's just going to be available for? Is there a period of time, or just it's going to always be available? How does that work? Do you know? Yeah, it should always be available. Yeah. So right now, like, um, so like the issue I was kind of talking about earlier, um, like you can still order the book, but what happened was there was a slight delay because I saw like um somebody who 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 needed credit. Yes. See, it was easy to find, right? Yeah, I just typed it in. Yeah, I typed in change. Yeah. Yeah. 
right away. Yeah, um, so someone who needed credit for something that they contributed towards the book, their name was not given credit in my book. So like two weeks ago, I had to actually like, I don't know what happened. It was probably just a miscommunication or maybe it got left off of like what Amazon had. I'm not sure. But I had to um, make sure that that got fixed. So even though my book is released, like there is um, a slight delay in deliveries at this point. But once that gets fixed, like any day, um, then the delivery date should like be immediate. So I'm just kind of waiting for it. But I feel bad because people are ordering it and it says, oh, like you're not going to get it until June. And I'm like, no, it's not like it's not true. Okay. Um, because I'm expecting them to like fix that that like yesterday. Okay. <laughs> so um, but um, to answer your question, I guess more specifically, um, I don't have like a deadline of like when it's not going to be up and being sold. Right. I think it's going to be like forever, pretty much. Okay. Um, other than like it's, um, I'm selling the hardback copies for the first three months. Um, so that so they're twenty three ninety nine, and that's going to be until about September. And then I'm switching to these paperbacks that are going to be about fifteen dollars, um, because they're paperbacks, so <laughs> um, they're not as as costly. Um, so that will change, but other than that, they'll still be up there for you guys, so forever. Isn't that cool to like have a book in your hand? Like you like, I don't know. It's cool that you have this book. It's like a physical. Yeah, idea. it's so cool. Like when I got these in, I was like, I was like mind blown. <laughs> like to see my face on it and like. No. It's crazy, and my name on there, it's like crazy. I'm still, I still don't believe it, but. Hey, big props to you for, you know, for doing it and getting through it. And it's, just the, it's just the beginning, right? It's not the finish line at all. You, you have uh, more goals, you know, to set and also reach. So, you know, I wish you the best of luck with this book and, and I hope anybody listening is able to find their way to your book. And I'll put the link everywhere. I will blast you on social media. Um, <laughs> let, let the people know where they could find you. Uh, I, know, I know you're on Instagram, but let them know where they could find you if you're anywhere else as well. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I did have a link tree actually on my page until I switched it to this Amazon link. Um, so I'm not sure how to provide that. But um, yeah, I'm on Facebook, Instagram. Um, I have a YouTube and like the little like end part is like a million letters and numbers still because I don't think I have enough followers <laughs> or, or um, subscribers. But you can just type my name in and some other chick has like my same name, but like one letter different. So don't click on her, but click on me because you'll see me. I like probably like right under her. Okay. <laughs> and um, I actually have my uh, spoken word videos on my YouTube. So that's probably like the best thing on there. Um, and yeah, yeah that's about it, I guess. Time? You're not doing TikTok? Uh, <laughs> I do have one, but I don't really, I don't really go on there or post you anything. Need to be everywhere. You need to be blasting little things everywhere. I'm telling you. Yeah, I should. I tried. I tried to like, I actually like did a little video with this book on there and I got like probably a hundred views. So I'm, yeah. maybe 200, but like, like I'm, I'm like, an, I'm like a nobody on there. Nobody wants to be on TikTok. So. <laughs> you never know. Hey, people can stumble across. I'm telling you, it, it can catch like fire. It's crazy. But uh, yeah, so yeah. I appreciate your time. I really do. Like, you know, we finally be able to connect on here and get on here and set some time apart to do this. And um, I wish you the best of luck. And uh, we'll be supporting you from Sacramento. And, and uh, when you're in town, we'll see if we can run into you somewhere. Yeah, thank you. I think I'm actually going to try to schedule my book signing in Sacramento for the last, for actually Memorial Day weekend on that Saturday. So that's kind of my plan. I don't have anything set in stone, but May 29th. I think it's when I'm going to be there. So okay. anything you have on Instagram, yeah. we'll be sharing it and posting it. And uh, yeah, I appreciate you coming on. Thank you. Yeah, so thank much. you. I appreciate you having me. I know you're a very busy person as well. So I really appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, and when you get the 12 million copies, uh, this podcast will be there, too, you know, right, right, right. I'll, I'll, I'll be like, hey, hey I'll, you know, I had her. Yeah, I'll post this for, like, for us, like when I get to that point. Okay, and I'll let everybody see that, that we were able to have this conversation. Heck yeah. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you. I appreciate you too. All right.